Oh, look at this hypnotic can going up and down. Well, this is going to be a slingshot game tutorial for uh, Action Script 3, and uh, you can export out the uh, the final project here for, as a um, as a, a project for the Android operating system, or obviously just as a standalone SWF or whatever you're going to use that for in the browser or some sort of uh, Air project. There's pretty much you can do anything with this guy, um, and it's um, obviously it's a, a, a slingshot type game, which is um, Based, I guess, a little bit off those like Angry Birds games where you just, um, that's the whole deal. You just sling one thing over to another thing. And uh, this doesn't have as, uh, as much complicated physics in there. For example, when we collide with something over this way after tossing this, it's not going to make some stack of towers fall down. But um, there is some uh, basic collision in here. And what we're going to be aiming for is a cooler that's off this way. So, and I might as well just go ahead and start trying to... Uh, get this in there so we can advance to uh, level two and hopefully did I make it all right I did okay so um, as you do ad advance forward in the game so we're at level two now you can see that this guy's now uh, doing more to block us from getting over that way and I'll, I'll try to maybe even get over to level three and uh, just to add a little bit of variation so you don't always know what the the sweet spot is for getting the can in the cooler uh, the cooler itself actually does end up uh, moving over time so it just moves uh, back that way and you can even um, you know obviously you're gonna be programming this yourself as you go along so you can even um, add some random code to make that cooler kind of appear um, in more random places but um, I'm not gonna sit here and mess with this uh, all day long it's a uh, it's a good little project I think uh, there's a lot going on here we've even got some sound which you guys may or may not be able to hear so well and obviously there's you know some interesting um, physics that are going on with uh, the can moving up and down in the background the foreground and all that good stuff so that is uh, what is ahead for us and let's go ahead and take a look at the start um, folder Okay, so here are the uh, included files, and uh, this start file actually will not um, be that much different than the uh, the finished file here. Uh, what I will do is make it so that uh, your start file uh, points to this folder of um, action script files, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, on my end, this is all going to say action script here, okay, which refers to this folder name. And inside of here, it's going to be pulling out all of these action script files. Uh, for your start file, what I'll do is you'll just change that to your, oops, your, like that, the lowercase. And uh, that will uh, pull up, uh, obviously, oops, those. Uh, action script files and uh, yours will be blank right now obviously because I'm expecting you guys to work through this uh, in the end uh, my action script files will obviously have all the code inside of there and then if you need to compare what I have to what you have and so on or just do a straight copy and paste um, sometimes that's necessary if you make so the slightest little typo you can run into a problem and um, you know what you can even do too you can even just copy the entire uh, file out of there and replace it with you know one of the ones that you've been working on if you really get uh, stuck and then we've got the uh, an images folder here which just has uh, this grass strip right here the uh, background that's this guy and then the uh, uh, PNG files for the uh, the cooler in the front and back and um, that way if you guys want to um, swap out uh, the artwork you can do that um, just replacing this artwork is not going to update it inside of here but if you were to go to say background double click on this and uh, you could re-import um, a different background or what you could do is, I think you should just be able to hit update if it is in that folder there with the same name. So that's that. And again, um, I'm gonna be working uh, just off of this cantos.fla file and, uh, well actually really, I'm gonna be working through most of these action script files which we will begin with this initials.as file, which is going to hold um, a lot of our initial variables and just the, the stuff to get us started here. And uh, if you need one last little look at this uh, layer of action script right here, uh, we are including or just in, basically importing in all this code. Uh, and, and the code that runs inside of these files is really no different than if I were just to have that same exact code just all pasted um, in the same exact order on uh, this layer right here. It's just a nice way of kind of breaking it up for us and um, you know so it's, it's a good kind of workflow thing to just be able to jump around to action script files and we'll have them all just kind of open throughout here. Okay let's give us a little bit more room to type and we can begin. And what I'm going to do is just uh, go ahead and paste in some of these um, 
uh, initial things that um, Flash is going to end up probably putting in here anyway for you guys. But um, th th actually, this is an important one, this accelerometer. I just don't want to forget to um, uh, have this imported in for later on. So we'll go ahead and get that in there now. And a lot of times I like to just throw a stop action on the, um, the first frame just in case we were ever to say uh, put an intro screen in the beginning here and, and move all this code out a little bit further. Uh, so this way at least stop on the game part. Okay, and now what we're going to do, um, actually one of the big things we're going to do with um, this action script file is set up some variable objects uh, for the initial positioning of um, everything that's on stage that's going to move when the can moves, okay? And the only things that don't move are going to be, uh, well, the logo here, which you'll probably get rid of anyway, and then um, th these objects and uh, this little sound uh, checkbox over here. So everything else, like these sticks here, the grass, you know, the background, this guy, everybody else is, is going to end up moving, and instead of us going in and typing out um, a, a variable, and figuring out, okay, the position of this is 645, uh, and the Y position is this. Uh, what we could just do is set up um, a variable initially that's going to store the exact values of everything that, you know, where they are right now. Okay, so if you were to, say, move him over here, that's going to affect, um, you know, this variable that we're about to set up. And we'll use him as a good example. So, um, that, uh, that little guy is called Scout, and I should point this out too, is that he's got an instance name of Scout, all right? Um, but the object or the variable that we're gonna set up here is gonna be called Scout starting, okay? And this is gonna be an object, okay? And this will be equal to, we gotta do our curly brackets here. Um, well, X is gonna be the property that we're setting up here. This could be anything you want, you could call it X starting okay or but we're just going to shorten it to be x and this will be scout.x okay and then let's go ahead and put in here another one you guessed it y and this will be equal to scout.y close off our little uh, bracket there and just kind of prove that we um, did this correctly let's go ahead and uh, throw a trace statement up here and now we can write scout starting and if we put dot after it okay we get to refer back to this property the x one okay and now let's just see what we get from that uh, 645.75 and if uh, I went a little bit too quick there with the publishing I did a hotkey for that. You can always go over here to uh, control, uh, test movie, and that. Or it's the, uh, well, at least on the Mac here, it's the uh, Apple key and the return button. I believe on the PC it is the whatever key is right next to the space bar and the whatever this says for you. Okay. I always forget which one that is. All right. So if you ever see me just quickly bring up the, the movie file like that, that's obviously what I have done, publish it out. All right, so if you did want to um, kind of prove what I was just doing here, like um, just changing this name, like X start or whatever, um, you could then write it like that, and you'd end up getting the same exact thing. Okay, 645 there. All right, so just to show you that, you know, the names are yours to choose, but let's get rid of that statement. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and paste in all the other ones that we're going to use for this, okay? And let's see. There we go. Um, I've also pasted in the one that we've already got, so let's get rid of that. And here we'll put, we'll organize this a little bit better. All right. You can see that I've just been using this capital starting after the exact instance name for all these um, variable objects. So whatever the um, instance name is of the object on stage, I just put starting after it and we set it up. And now what makes most sense is actually to go ahead and open up this uh, reset play dot action script file. Uh, and that way you can see how we're going to end up using this, um, even though we're kind of jumping around a little bit. This is kind of what you do when you program. Uh, what we'll do is set up a function in here, okay? And we're going to just go ahead and call this function reset play, uh, parentheses, opening and closing bracket. 
And um, this function now is that uh, if you don't know what a function is, it's just basically code that is ready to be used. Um, so it's um, we're setting it up at this moment. We're not actually running the, the function. If we were to um, play this function or call it, uh, we would write this. Okay, so we just take the function name and those opening and closing parentheses, put a, uh, that semicolon after it, and then that would run whatever code is inside of here. But we'll do that later on when you do something like press down on that can. Uh, for right now, I just want to show you uh, how we're going to end up using these. So, this is pretty darn simple. What we're just going to write back inside of here is scout.x is going to now equal scout starting.x. All right. And then, of course, the same thing for the y and so on and so on for every one of those uh, objects. And this is yet another reason why we are going to uh, resort to cutting and pasting. So let me go ahead and just do that for you guys right now. Okay. And you know, there's a one little thing that we're gonna end up uh, modifying later on. Oops. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this for right now. Pretend you didn't see this. It spoils some stuff later. There we go. Okay, all nice and pretty. Uh, let's see, since I put that one in there, we don't need this one right now. Okay, so it's just the reverse of everything that we had before. Okay, initially we were setting these up to be equal to this. Now, this will go back and equal whatever it was at the very beginning. Uh, when we publish the movie. And that's the important thing is that, you know, I've got everything set up um, right now exactly how I want things to begin um, when this movie begins playing, okay? So if you were to make a change to that, right, if you just thought, eh, I'll move this guy out of the way, we don't need him. Well, no, that's actually going to be very important for the code later on because that's, that's, that's going to be this guy's initial starting position. So you want to get him exactly where you want to be. And uh, we will... We'll actually go back and forth between this initials um, file and this uh, reset play file quite a bit because there's a lot of other variables that we're going to need to reset as we go through here. So we'll go, we'll leave both of those action script files uh, open. Okay, here's the fun stuff. Uh, we're going to put in here a variable for gravity, and this is going to equal 0 0.1. And of course, um, these are all. Uh, I guess you could say suggested values. I mean, you don't want to veer from them too much or you're going to end up with um, a game that's maybe unplayable. But um, we, uh, we will be able to mess with all these later on and just kind of experiment with um, what each uh, does uh, a little bit more. But uh, for right now, let's just go ahead and set them all up here in this uh, initials file. And var radius. All these, all these actually uh, variables coming up here are going to be numbers. Uh, this is going to equal uh, one, and uh, if I remember right, what this one does is kind of puts a little bit of a separation between uh, the uh, the object that you're pulling down between the uh, the two uh, bit of strings. So I just left that at one because I don't really think there needs to be one. And then uh, this one has probably the most effect uh, in the game. Play-wise, this elastic coefficient because just the slightest little difference in these numbers makes the game a whole lot different. Um, when I was initially playing around with this, I had it set to uh, this uh, 0 0.001, and then just setting that to 0 0.0015 uh, makes the can um, shoot up way higher. And so obviously, if you had something like two or three, you're going to be sending it um, well up into the air, which um, makes it a lot harder to kind of figure out exactly where it's going to end up at. Okay, and then uh, a couple uh, or a few Boolean variables here. Uh, this first one's going to be released, and this is a Boolean, so the two possible values here are either just true or false, and the first one's going to be true, and then this var forced is going to be a Boolean variable as well. This is going to be false. And again, we'll see how these get end up getting used in a little bit. But uh, basically, the, the Boolean is if it's um, been released, if the can or whatever the object is, is it has been released. Uh, and then the forced is whether or not it is, and I'll put a little note in here, whether or not it is being um, 
pulled down between the uh, sticks. And again, six being these guys here. And actually, there's a there's an invisible um, movie clip behind these sticks uh, called point one and then uh, point two. And these are really what end up determining where that uh, line of string is uh, drawn to and from. And let's add in, uh, this is another one of our little nifty object variables. Uh, this ACC is short for acceleration. This is going to equal, and again, we'll use an X and a Y in here for right now. We'll just set both of these to zero. And then do the same thing. In fact, let's copy this line. For and this will be short for velocity, so V E L, and that takes care of um, I think most of the yeah the initial variables for anything to do with our kind of physics of the can moving around, and of course <clears throat> we'll put all these into effect in a uh, function in just a little bit, but uh, we got a few more things to add in here. One of them will be a uh, level. Okay, so we're gonna start things off at level one. So I'll just equal one here. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and put in um, LVL. Then I'll, I'll show you what that is in just a moment. That is, is, is a uh, dynamic text box. I'll show you where it is on stage. And this will just be equal to um, the string equivalent. OK, so just converting whatever this number is, or I'm sorry, whatever this number is, into a string of text. And that LVL is right here. OK, so that dynamic text box, and then of course uh, we'll see later on these other uh, dynamic text boxes get populated. And let's see, one more Boolean variable, at least one more. And this will be um, whether or not you hit the scout. Okay, so uh, this will be Boolean, and initially that will be false. This will switch to true if this can happens to collide with its face or any other part of them. So let's go and open up our mouse events uh, action script file. And what we can do is put in here a couple um, event listeners so that we can uh, pull down on the can, move it around, and um, uh, well, eventually we'll obviously release it, but uh, one of the things we'll do when we press down on it is uh, make use of this function in here to uh, reset uh, where everything is at. Okay, so first thing will just be can add event listener, and obviously that can refers to the can symbol on stage, its uh, instance name, which I think we've all figured out by now. And this is going to be a mouse down event, and I'm going to call the function, or I'm going to name this function can down. All right, so let's go over here and set that up. Okay, here's the function being set up. This is an event and a mouse event type it's calling it and oh, if it wants to put that in there for you sure go ahead okay so um, when we press down on it this is exactly what's going to happen okay there's that function name and i'm going to now put in here reset play we uh we could go ahead and uh, test this out i mean we might as well but um you're obviously not going to see uh, anything occur because uh, resetting everything at this point. Well, here I'm clicking down on it. Nothing has moved anywhere. Okay, so let's um, let's do this. Let's write can dot x is going to equal mouse x can dot y is going to equal mouse y can dot start drag. It's going to get dragged around now. Okay. And then, let's do this again one more time. Okay, press down on it, and sure enough, it uh, goes where we go, and it's um, obviously I've, I've let go of it now, but um, it's just sticking on to me because we don't actually have any sort of um, uh, mouse up event uh, to go along with that. And we'll put that in here in just a moment. I'm just going to be lazy and copy this out. We'll just get rid of uh, that. And we'll put in here can dot stop drag, and of course, uh, what we need to do as well is change this to can up, can up, and 
This will now be a mouse up. Oops. Somehow, there we go. This will be a now, uh, mouse up event. Okay, let's give it a quick publish and just see where we're at here. Okay, so obviously i let go of it now and uh, all that works fine. Uh, one thing that um, we still need to consider is that uh, I uh, nothing in this reset play is actually showing us that it's working. Uh, I, in fact, you know what I could even do? I could even throw in here something that says can dot x equals like 290. Uh, this is roughly its starting position right now. Can equals 140, um, which according to my notes is something that we're going to do later on. But um, even now, if we were to do that, we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't see it occurring because immediately after we press down on it, we start dragging it around. And we make the X and the Y value equal to where it's, the mouse is at. So, um, so yeah, this, this just doesn't really demonstrate that the, that function is um, working exactly yet. But, uh, you know, as soon as we um, throw in our uh, code for um, having everything affected by gravity, we will see some stuff going on. And, you know, we're probably about at that point. Let's go ahead and open up uh, this file, uh, do constantly, okay? And uh, this is going to be a function that, um, well, is constantly running. Okay, so we're going to uh, add an event listener just to the stage itself so we don't have to put anything in front of it. Like in that previous one, we had can in front of it. In fact, that would probably work too. It's, but, but we can just put this uh, just on the, the main stage here. And uh, this event will be running uh, at the same frame rate. Okay, so enter frame. And uh, that's pretty quick. I think our, our uh, let's see, our frames per second is 30 frames per second. So this uh, code will get run uh, 30 times within a second. All right, and we'll call this function uh, do constantly. Come down here again. Right, do constantly. This is uh, an event type. Okay, and we're not uh, returning anything from this. So we're just going to void here. And this is going to be a there's going to be a lot of code inside of here. Um, what I'm going to do is try to put in here as, as many notes as I can about what exactly is going on. I mean, obviously I should be doing that, but um, let's just call this um, section here um, uh, main code for uh, gravity affecting can and other stuff. Okay, um, one thing we're going to do though is always be setting the acceleration.x back to zero in the beginning and then the um, acceleration.y is going to be equal to that uh, gravity um, variable that we set up way back yonder over here remember this guy 0 0.1 and then what we're going to do is write if released equals true okay if you remember that's that boolean type variable and we're basically just saying if uh if you have released the can okay if you've let go of it uh then it's okay to do what's inside of here so let's put a little note that says if you have let go of the can and one thing we need to do is let's go ahead and copy this a part of it and go over here to our mouse events so when you um let go of the can okay there we go. True. That'll be true. And you guessed it. When you uh, take hold of the can, uh, this will be false. Okay. So basically, gravity is not going to affect um, a uh, the can when. Uh, well, here. Let me just write it out. Gravity will not affect the can when false. Okay. And if you want to be really clear about it, let's just go put another note. Gravity will affect the can when true. Okay, so go back over this way. And now, instead of here, what we're going to do is write uh, velocity.x. It's going to, um, well, this is our nifty little plus equals. It saves us from having to write uh, this plus dc.x. Okay, so if you ever see, well, here, let's just type it out one more time. plus equals, all by that part right there. Uh, these lines are exactly the same. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's a nice little shorter way of writing it. And 
We'll do the same thing for the y, y, and can.x, same deal, plus equals. And by the way, we're at least initially here, some of these things are not going to um, affect us. Like the can dot rotation plus equals positive dot x. Because we, uh, when we test in just a moment, we're only going to be seeing any sort of effect um, along the y axis, okay? Because we haven't done anything yet that's going to be moving the can along the x, okay? Because remember, too, we've, we've only got gravity in this. Um, this downward direction right now. Of course, if we did have, um, I don't know, I guess if you wanted to throw some wind in there, um, you could always be starting off your um, uh, acceleration.x at, at something other than zero. Uh, so keep that in mind. But uh, we are going to, uh, let's see. Well, eventually we're obviously going to be uh, making some changes to that velocity along the x because we will be seeing the can rotate as it goes across. But what I want to do is, I guess, actually just test this out right now. We should have every, everything in place to at least give us a good little test. Okay, so it's obviously you can see the can just fell down there. Goodbye. Uh, we're not going to see it again. Let's publish one more time just so I can try to get over here in time to grab it. And sure enough, I did. All right, so... Hey, look at that. That in itself is kind of a game. <laughs> Grab the can before it falls down. And then uh, if I release it, okay, you can see it goes back down. One thing that's going on, though, is it's constantly speeding up. The more times I do this because um, we keep adding uh, to the, uh, the the downward velocity here uh, with uh, gravity. So gravity keeps kind of piling up on this thing. So what we want to do is uh, when we do reset the play, and remember that's every time that we grab that can, uh, we are going to uh, reset some of these variables as well. So the, um, the velocity x is going to equal 0, velocity dot y is going to equal 0, and this acceleration dot x is going to equal 0, and then uh, this acceleration dot y is actually just going to go back to equaling gravity again. Okay. All right, now let's give it another shot. And so it slowly kind of drifts down. Same deal. Just keep doing it over and over again. And it's not speeding up over time. Okay, good sign. 